Hello and welcome to another video. In today's episode we are continuing our deep dive into the Arch Linux installation process where we try to understand the installation guide a command by command. So when we are installing Arch Linux we exactly know what we are doing. And today's episode is going to be about configuring the system and at least uh, the first few steps of configuring your previously installed system. So before I go into the main topic, I would like to uh, suggest you to subscribe to this channel if you are interested in this Arch Linux related content to be notified when the next steps of these tutorials or other Arch Linux related videos are coming up. So now with that out of the way, let's uh, start talking about configuring our system during the Arch Linux installation process. So as uh, you should be doing when you are installing your system, we are following the official installation guide here. And so these previous steps have all been covered. So if you have not seen these previous videos and you are not at yet this point yet, so we already installed the essential packages after mounting the file system, mounting the partitions and formatting these partitions and etc. So we are going to take a look at the first few steps of this configuration process now. So go back to the previous videos if you are interested in the previous steps. So after we installed the essential packages like the kernel, some text editor, something we want to have on our system, we can start configuring the basic things like uh, this uh, fstab file. We will also use this chroot command to get into our uh, new system and we will set up time zone, localization, network configuration and things like that. But in today's video I am just going to take you until this point so you will have to watch the upcoming videos for the other topics. So what is fstab? So fstab is basically a file that contains the mount information. So it is like the file system tab. And the system D uses this uh, list of file systems to mount the files in uh, at the startup of your system. You can check the fstab page on the Arch wiki for more details and so you can see that the file systems can be identified through a lot of means like kernel name descriptors and uh, these are like the dev slash dev slash sda1 or uh, file system labels or uuids and uh, well partition labels there are a lot of uh, options for that but you have to create this file first for your new system and the, the genfs tab command from the arch install script package will do it for you. So this is a very complicated script. I tried to take a look at the source code of this or the, the bash script itself and it is something that I don't really understand how it does it. But what it does is actually, so let's uh, jump into uh, the virtual machine. So here I already have my system mounted and if you are just following this installation process you should be uh, having your system mounted already. So let's take a look at lsblk to list the bulk devices and you can see here that sda1 and sda2 are mounted at slash mnt and slash mnt slash boot and uh, we can uh, generate so the basically based on this slash mnt which will if I just type in gen fs tab slash mnt then this will give us these two uh, two um, partitions that are mounted under the slash mnt and its subdirectories so if you have other things mounted under slash mnt so maybe you have uh, like a, a home directory mounted at slash mnt slash home this uh, script here uh, will include it in its output and so there are other options so we can just use this uh, dash capital U and then we can see that what's the difference here and take a look at the difference of these two outputs 
So first one with, without the capital U switch, the UUID is uh, comment, commented out and these uh, kernel identifiers are used. So if we let's uh, jump back to the Arch wiki here. So this uses the kernel name descriptors now. If I don't use the dash capital U, if I use the dash capital U, then uh, uh, let me show you that here, and actually I can trick, do this trick. So here the UUID is shown and this kernel name descriptor is what is actually, um, actually commented out. Um, in the hit, this is the re reverse without the dash capital U. There is, I think, an other option here, which uh, was, if I am correct, let's just let's just take a look here. What are the available switches? Because I don't want to use the manual when I can just take a look at the so source code. So by label, which will be the capital L here. Okay, I feel. I overdid this, so let's uh, just change this to capital L and we can... Well, do we not have labels? Maybe we don't have we don't have labels for those file systems, so that's why it did not do it with the labels. The lab Instead of the labels, it just uses the kernel name descriptors again. Okay, and so this is not important because we want to use the capital U, we want to create this file based on the UUIDs, so whatever happens in our system, the UUIDs should be unique and it should work, and we will just use this double, um, what is this symbol, double larger than symbol, and we will create the file in mnt slash etc slash fs tab, so this will write the file and we can check the slash mnt slash etc slash fs tab file that it contains all this information that we are interested in so that is very good and we now our system the the init system will know what to do after uh, we we will boot up our system. Well, we cannot. We don't have a bootloader yet, but that will be the function. And this one uses the find mnt command to gather the disk information. If you are interested in this gen fs tab, so find mnt is uh, basically find mnt. So this will just spit out all these mounted uh, file systems there. Let's, uh, if we say find mnt and less, then we can just go through like all these different things that are, are mounted in some ways in Linux because, well, mounting is good, <laughs> I guess. So this basically just uses this find mnt and then filters out those uh, those uh, mount points which are relevant based on this slash mnt mount point that we gave our uh, system there. Okay, so we checked the generated files, maybe there are things you want to um, modify there, you can do that, but generally it works quite well. So next thing is Cheroot. What is Cheroot? We are changing the root virtually at least into this new system so it is an operation that changes the apparent root directory for the current running process and their children so basically we are running them inside our new system so these commands work as if our new system was started and well there are a lot of times when you will have to use that for example installing a bootloader or rebuilding the init ramfs image when uh, you know your system is not booting because of the corruption of this image or the system does not start due to some uh, package problems so maybe reinstalling packages or upgrading downgrading you can do from true 
and well, resetting a forgotten password, for example. But basically what we need to do here is there are a lot of uh, steps in this installation procedure where we have to assume this uh, new system work inside this new system basically to set up the time zone which we'll do in this video. So in the true root environment we can do commands and these commands won't affect our uh, native system that we are in. So even if you are installing Arch from an existing Arch Linux system, you can use these commands inside the true root and this won't affect your uh, own system. It will only affect the mounted system that you are working on. And we are using the Arch true root command, which, will, which is also part of this install script package. And it is a very complicated process that clones certain elements of the host system because, well, you have to remount some things. We just saw that how many different mount points are in Linux. So let's uh, just root into our new system, at, which is mounted at slash mnt by saying arch root slash mnt. And so if I cat here the slash etc slash fs tab file you can see that the fs tab file that we created at slash mnt slash etc slash fs tab is now just slash etc slash fs tab inside this chroot environment so we are going to use this chroot environment to configure our new systems in a lot of different ways first of which is going to be the time zone we already had some discussion about time zones and timekeeping on Linux in a previous video, which you can check right over there, if I don't forget to include the card, of course. So these time zone files are kept in these uh, directories based on region, and we should uh, link, so this is going to create a symbolic link to this, uh, to the proper time zone at this etc slash local time. This is going to be our first command in the chroot environment. So let's uh, go back to our virtual machine in which we are going to ln-sf slash usr slash share slash zone info. And inside that there are different regions. So if you are not uh, if you don't know exactly what's going on there, you can always just list what's inside there. You can see here we, there are a lot of things there. Europe, Hong Kong, Poland, Portugal, Pacific, Universal, UTC, everything. I don't know. So maybe you are in Europe, so let's uh, list everything that's in Europe. These are the time zones available in Europe or, or maybe America. Oh, a lot of different time zones in America. Okay, so let's create our file by ln-sf. So we are going to create the symbolic link to usr slash share slash zone info slash asia slash soul in my case. And uh, this will be referenced at slash etc slash loc local loc a l t i m e local time okay now if i want to check back file slash etc slash local time then we can see it's a low symbolic link to usr slash share slash zone info slash whatever your own uh, local time is going to be and we can now um, tell systemd to set the hardware clock properly and we will do that which will update the timestamp in slash etc slash adj time and that will let's take a look how it looks like here so let's go back to our virtual machine and say hw, HW clock dash dash sys to hc so this will uh, update the system update the hardware clock based on the system clock and uh, 
which updated the timestamp in Etsy. So let's just cut out at slash etc slash age time. And so this is kind of the timestamp in that file. So if you are interested in the uh, this hardware clock thing, what exactly is going on here, then you can check like sys2hc command in this is basically set the hardware clock from the system clock and update the timestamps. And you can also recalculate the drift factor, which is basically your computer has a more accurate hardware clock and the less accurate kernel uh, timekeeping and there is some kind of drift between these two things. But this is very technical, you might not be really interested in this one. Okay, so basically we did uh, finish setting up our time zone and as we can uh, see in the Arch Linux installation guide here, we still have a lot of things that we can do from this Chroot environment and this is going to be something that we are going to take a look at in another video. So if you enjoyed this video, why don't you consider giving me a thumbs up or share with other people who might be interested in the Arch Linux installation process and not just the surface level way they don't just want to uh, rush through it and just install a system that either works or not but wants to understand what exactly are what exactly are the things that we are doing while installing Arch Linux because believe it or not understanding what you're doing is going to actually help you a lot when uh, something is going wrong and you need to find a solution for that so I don't want to rant on too long about this um, you can add the playlist to your own uh, YouTube profile if you want to uh, check back later if there are new videos about this playlist and well subscribe and check out my other episodes and I will see you next time. Bye bye!